Hey everybody and welcome to day 4 of VED. Hey guys, it's Jeremy and today I'm going to be talking about a post that I saw on Tumblr a little while back ago. It was about Cinderella and the post was something along these lines of if the glass slipper fit perfectly then why did it fall off? Even in fairy tales love sucks. And so today I'm going to be talking about love within Disney and the deeper implications of that love. So I'm going to start with Cinderella since that is the premise of this video. Cinderella is a story about a girl who changes herself for a prince so that he'll fall in love with her. Now yes, the shoe did fall off and that implies that there is some kind of imperfection with love. But there's imperfection with all kinds of love. There's no such thing as a perfect love. So what my thought is is that the slipper fell off because Cinderella did change herself for him. And it wouldn't be fair if the prince fell in love with her just because she was a rich, wealthy, beautiful woman. He had to prove that his love was so strong that it would break down SES barriers. And he was willing to marry her no matter who she was. And when he found out that he was a girl of very little importance, he still married her and loved her exactly the same as when he did when he was dancing with her. Next I'm going to be talking about Snow White, and her prince is kind of a worthless prince. The reason why I say this is because he shows up at the very beginning and scares the poor little girl, and then he shows up at the very end of the story to kiss her dead, decomposing body. I'm sorry, but that's really creepy. However, the love in this story, while it's small and very hard to find, the love that's in there is that Snow White waited for her prince even in death. And I think that proves something greater about love, is that love doesn't just stop when you move distances. Snow White and her prince were far away from each other. They had not seen each other in a long time, but they were still in love as they were that day that they met. And same goes for true love. True love cannot be separated by distance. And true love especially cannot be taken away in death. Look at Mitchell Fredrickson from Up. He took his entire house and blasted it up some canyon so that he could fulfill the desire that he and his wife had while they were still in love. And he was still in love with her even after her death. I'm going to talk about Tangled next. And this is quite possibly the most romantic story of all the Disney movies. And the reason why I say this is because it's not a story about love. It's a story about true love. For those of you who haven't seen the movie, I'm going to ruin it a little bit for you. Flynn Rider, the main male character, was willing to give up his life so that Rapunzel would be able to live the life as she wanted. He was willing to die so that he could save her. And in my eyes, that's a story more about love than anything else. I'm going to talk about The Little Mermaid next. Ariel and Eric have a really interesting relationship, and while there are no really deep implications of love in this movie, I think that this movie speaks a lot towards love in a deeper way than other Disney movies do. Ariel was totally and completely in love with Eric, but he was so infatuated with the voice that he hardly noticed that she existed. I believe that this has great implications on love because I feel like it speaks to something that we all go through at least once, and that is the feeling of not being heard, not being seen, not being loved back. It's that gut-wrenching feeling you get when you're not chosen as the one. In the end, however, Ariel did get her prince, but she had to experience the pain of loss and not being chosen. And I believe that resonates deep with everyone else that watches Disney than many of the other Disney movies can, because it's not a message that's too far out of the imagination. I'm going to talk about Princess and the Frog now. I really despise this movie. And the reason why I don't like this movie is because Tiana is a strong, independent black woman and she's reduced to being a frog her entire movie. This is one of the very first Disney girls who becomes a princess later who was so strong in herself that she didn't need anybody else to complete her. And yet she got reduced to being an animal the entire movie. And not even a cute animal, a frog. Now, I don't know about you, but I really don't feel like that speaks too much to the African-American struggle. And on top of it, I really dislike Naveen. I think he's a dirty, nasty man whore. But I do believe that there is a deep side of love in this story. And that is that both parties had to give up something that was important to them in order to love each other. Love is not a fairy tale, and in order for two people to be together and to be in love, you have to be able to be willing to give something of yourself. Tiana had to give up her dreams of owning a restaurant, and Naveen had to give up his dreams of being a wealthy man whore again. Both of these characters had to give something of themselves, much like every single couple has to give of themselves in order to make a relationship work. Beauty and the Beast is next. Belle and Beast have a textbook Stockholm Syndrome relationship, but their story tells us something deep about love, and that is looking deep into the other person and loving them for exactly who they are. Because Belle saw through the ugliness of Beast, their relationship becomes a metaphor for real relationships. We all have our ugliness that comes out even in the best of times, and the only way that we can make a relationship work is if we're willing to look past that ugliness and see the beauty that is that other person. Belle saw that there was something deep within Beast that was hurting, and she was willing to be there to help him through that and to help him heal in that. Oftentimes, ugliness comes from a brokenness, and if you're willing to sit in that brokenness with someone, you can help them heal and help them become the beautiful person that you can see within them. And that's exactly what Belle saw in Beast, and that's exactly what she was able to accomplish by staying with him. 
I'm going to talk about Sleeping Beauty next because I feel like Aurora and Philip have the most beautiful relationship of all the Disney princes and princesses. Now the reason why I say this is because Philip was a filthy rich prince who was about to be betrothed to someone who was supposed to be gorgeous. They were going to have their own kingdom and the implications of not marrying this woman would be that his father and Stefan's kingdom would most likely war against each other. Even through all of this, Philip was willing to give up everything and risk all that bad, even banishment from his own kingdom, to marry someone who was the status of a peasant girl, someone who had no promise to the kingdom, someone who could contribute nothing to his family name, to his wealth, and would probably downgrade his status. I'm going to talk about Aladdin next, and this is another tough movie to look through because Jasmine is a spoiled, rich, nasty girl who really didn't see Aladdin for who he was until really the very end of their relationship. Aladdin and Jasmine fell in love with the idea of each other rather than who the other person was. Jasmine was dangerous, exotic, somehow mystical from what he knew. Aladdin was a free spirit who didn't have to worry about planning his day according to a set schedule. Aladdin felt like he had to change everything about himself in order to please Jasmine and to get her attention, and this proved true through each and every movie. In the first movie with Prince Ali, in the second movie with Iago, and in the third with not telling her about his own father. I think, though, that this movie speaks to the importance of an honest relationship, and that relationships cannot function if they're based on lies. It took three movies for these two to finally get married, for goodness sakes. What does that tell you about them? I'm going to talk about Mulan last, and this is a really weird one, and it took a long time for me to actually dig into it and figure out what the deeper implication of love was in this movie, because Shane didn't know, really, about Mulan until the last few minutes of the movie. And even then, he was embarrassed by her. What I discovered is that the deeper implications are finding a friend before you find a lover. And it wasn't until that point that she proved that she was a man, that she was one of the guys that she gained Shang's trust and his respect and his friendship. From that point on, they were close. They were friends. They helped each other through the times they needed each other. They were there through the thick and the thin. They created a bond with each other that was so strong that Shang felt that he owed his life to Ping. When they both finally came to terms with who Ping was, Shang couldn't find it in himself to kill Mulan, even though that was the law. And even through the shame, Mulan was still his friend. He couldn't bring himself to kill someone who was so close to him. This movie, I believe, speaks about a love about friendship, and falling in love with someone for exactly who they are, rather than because they're pretty or they have some kind of importance, like so many traditional fairy tales try to say. Now, in all fairness, Shang wasn't in love with Ping, but he did fall in love with Mulan because of the friendship that they developed. And I think this is much more important than any other Disney story could ever explain because you must be friends with who you're going to be in love with and who you're going to marry because the person you're going to be with for the rest of your life has to be someone that you're not going to kill or get really bored of after a while. I think the most important thing to remember is that love is not a fairy tale and each of these stories has their own holes in them. Just remember that love is patient, love is kind, and love is something that develops over time. And to quote rescuers, you can't see it or touch it or wrap it up tight but it's there all the same to make things just right. Thanks all for watching. Peace out.